All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. And in case we have internet down for a little bit, just refresh your page, please, and don't complain because I can tell you from now my internet is bad. Uh, it's Sunday, I mean, people watching TV, etc. Blah blah blah. Uh, in front of us, we have uh, Abdul, who I challenged a long time ago. I mean, if he dare, he's not even worth a debate, but as long as he think like he's a big shot. And actually, I believe that this guy, he worked for the German intelligence. You know, all, uh, all intelligence in the West, they have, uh, they have a mole. So they have people who supposedly converted to Islam and they show that they are really so much in love with Islam. And later we find out that they are the one who report Muslims and arrest terror, uh, you know, terrorists. Uh, they put them inside most so they can get in <clears throat> and they can be trustworthy. Otherwise, if this guy is, a, is really what he claimed to be, Salafi, well, how come he did not do jihad? You know, I mean, just he's, he's just a talker. <clears throat> now, in this video, I don't know what he's saying because simply it's in German and I don't speak German. But some people, they told me that I have wrong translation. And he showed in one of the pages uh, that... Uh, there is a misleading in the translation which is uh, you know nice that he is working to show us the misleading and in here you know you see the stupidity of those people this is the book i'm quoting and he say in the translation it says that his mother later she told the, the grandfather of muhammad to name him muhammad because she saw a dream he said he did not say that in the translation you see, first of all, you just confirm that Muhammad's real name is Qatham. Because it's what the hadith is saying. When one of the family of Muhammad, he passed away, his name was Qatham ibn Abdul Muttalib. And he died three years before Muhammad bore in a birth. And he was nine years old. And his grandfather, uh, uh, sorry, his father, he, he, he uh, uh, like he was so sad because he lost him. And this is a tradition when they get the second boy after the one who is lost or die, they name him by the one who just passed away. So it says here, for, so when he, when Muhammad was born, he called him, he named him Qatham. Until his mother, she told him that she saw in her dream that should call him Muhammad. Then he called him Muhammad. But that will not change the thing. Because his mother, she did not right away say to him, oh, don't call him. So he called him already Qatham. This is his real name. And it's very funny. You are saying, so he, we know that later his name became Muhammad. I mean, how stupid are you? Where is that dishonesty? We call him Muhammad today, but we are telling you in my book that the first name was given to him is Qatham, not Muhammad. And then he go to show you example of misleading. In the video, he mentioned the chapter 5, verse number 347. As I know, there is no such a verse. I don't know how he got this number. I don't know where he got it, but obviously this guy is an idiot. Uh, you know, I activated the, there's an option here. You can activate the script, open the script, and here you can see. Because I thought the one who told me in the chat, in the, like in, I asked some people to translate to me, and this is what they told me. He said, chapter 5, verse number 347. What is my proof? The book in the front of you. I mean, look at this. Look at those people, man. I just showed you the book of a Asira. Asira. And you say to me, what's your proof? So look at this idiot. He said the chapter 5, verse number 347. Since when chapter 5 have 347 verses? But this is what happened. They are ignorant. They don't know how to read the Quran. And for the one who said, show me the proof. Here we go. Let me show it to you again. This is the book of Asira. Asira. Volume number 1. Page number 131. And then he will give it to me. What, what is your proof? Show me your proof. Asir al Halabiya, value number one, page number 131. What is the proof? 
السير الحلبية فاليوم نمبر 1 بيج 131 وير از ذا بروف؟ ذير از نو بروف السير الحلبية فاليوم نمبر 1 بيج 131 وير از ذا بروف؟ اه ناو وي جو باك تو ذا ايديت هو از كوتين فور مي تشابتر 5 فيرس نمبر 347 I mean, the biggest chapter in the Quran is the chapter of the cow, and don't have such a, you know, like, a, I mean, you, but anyway, they didn't know how to quote the Quran. Let us go there. So he said, and you know, he, he is obviously, uh, he's talking about different verses. He's an idiot. He did not know how to quote his, book, his own book. So uh, uh, he come to a conclusion that this is a 300, uh, 347, verse number 347. If we go, you will find, you know, I was trying to understand how, how he came with this number. I mean, where is this number coming from? This is a chapter 5, verse number. Uh, mostly he's talking about chapter 5, verse number 48. You know, and actually I asked people who they are watching the video if they can tell me what he's talking about. Because what chapter 3, chapter 5, verse number 300. Anyway, so just to show you, he is saying that Allah don't deceive. This is the whole point. Allah don't deceive. Okay. We have tons of verses in the Quran. We can go from chapter 5, we can go to chapter 3, we can go to all chapters in the Quran. All of them, they say the same. But you know what? I'm not going to use my own translation. I will use your own translation. This is translation of whom? Be my witness. This is Yusuf Ali. Muhammad Yusuf Ali, a big shake, shaky one. You don't want Yusuf Ali, we can choose one. Muslims, which one translation you want? Guys, is my internet still coming? Because it's showing me that it is red, you know, when the when the red light show, that's mean the internet speed is bad. Yeah? So uh this is Yusuf Ali. Okay, who is the one who caused to be astray? And this is their translation. But he leaves strain whom he pleased. Okay, is it really he leave or he caused you to be astray or to be misleaded? Change the translator. Actually, I'm willing to show you all translation you wish for. Just name one, I will show you. Let us go to Shakir. Remember, we were in you know uh, uh, Yusuf, uh, Yusuf Ali. Okay, he caused, but he caused to err whom he pleased. <laughs> So the idiot, this guy, the German guy who does not know how to read his book, he is saying that we are lying. The Quran does not teach that Allah caused you to be misleaded. He is not a deceiver. But who is the one who caused you to be in error? Allah. Who is the one who guide you? Allah. Who said that? The Quran. Who translate that? The Muslims. And yet they will say to you, Christian Prince is lying. And now we will see a Muslim in the chat saying to you, to me, what is your proof? Like, Abdul, what are you talking about? It's in the front of you. Do you have a proof? No, sure not. The Quran, it's in front of you. What is the proof? Abdul, it's in the front of you. How Allah caused me to be in error? How he do that? He have to do something. He have to misguide me. He have to mislead me. And you know what? Let us do this. If I take the word yudil or any other word in the Quran, let us first take the you know my my book. Uh, Allah is makar. See, my internet is 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 getting bad. I just receive. Yeah. All right. So if we go here and we search for the word Makara in the Quran, Makara, what Makara mean? What Makara mean? Any Muslim can tell me? What Makar mean? What Makar mean? We can go right now and go to the dictionary. Here first, we have in the dictionary the word yudil. What yudil mean? 
Allah lets you go astray. <laughs> this is the this is the Islamic dictionary. And here in green says Quranic words. Allah lets go astray. Who do that? Allah. Or led astray. This is what you will mean. Does let go astray? Er let go astray. He will cause to be lost. In green here, all the green here, it says Quranic word, Quranic word, Quranic word. So all the dictionary agree with me. Who are you? You see, all is this is Quran. Now let us take the word makara or makir or makar or makar, which is mentioned in the Quran. What makar mean? Deceive, cheat, delude, double, double across. Do you see it? This is what makar mean. Let us take the verb of it, yamkor. Hmm. This is your Islamic uh, dictionary. Archiousness. I'm not sure if I'm saying the word correctly. Deception. Deceptives. De deceptiveness. Uh, it, it's a deceiving. It's about all is deceiving. Trick. Fraud. Do you see it? The Quran says Allah is the best of fraud. So they say Christian prince is lying to you. This is the dictionary. This is your Islamic dictionary. Here we go. I can post the link for you. This is Al Ma'ani. This is a very Islamic dictionary. I have nothing to do with it. And when it's come to the Quran, it says plotted. Go and see what the plotted. Plotted is doing something in high, in like in the hide, uh, uh, to hurt somebody, to destroy somebody. The conspiracy. Allah, this is what Allah he do. Now, just to make it simple, uh, post post the link. Well, the link have because I have the Arabic search, so it's not going to come. But we can do this. Hold on. Let me shorten the link. <laughs> There's an option to shorten link shorten. Okay, give me a second because always when you put uh, in the search Arabic, the search will appear in Arabic and then you cannot post it in, which means the link will have an Arabic word in it. Okay, here we go. You can use that website, you can copy any word from the Quran there you can copy it as it is in Arabic all right you can go here as an example I can copy this word here Yudel, in the front of you and then I can go to the dictionary and I will post it in the front of you let us do it as it is in the, in the Quran click enter here we go this is a translation from the Islamic dictionary. Right? So did the Christian prince lie? Yudil in Arabic means to deceive, to fool, to lie to. Can you pause the Arabic about Qatham? Yeah, we can, no problem. Let me shorten the link for you. <clears throat> and actually, this link I will give you, you can click in Google, use Google uh, uh, browser, and you can click translate from English, I mean from Arabic to any language of your choice. Let us go. And here we go, this is the link.
Well, in the in the manuscript, in the script, in the chat, it says 375. Okay, that's good. Thank you for saying. So chapter, chapter three, verse number seven. That's wonderful. Thank you for the help. We will go right now to chapter three, verse number seven. What do you think? And let us see the Muslim translation. And you read yourself, <clears throat> right? Uh, where is the guy who said the chapter three, verse number seven? Okay, let us go to chapter three, verse number seven. Chapter three, verse number seven, bingo. Let us read. This is the Muslim translation. This is not me. I have nothing to do with it. This is the translation of who? Let us see. Yusuf Ali. All right? I have nothing to do with it. Okay. It says here, it is he who sent down the book, and there is verses, who, uh, uh, basic or fundamental, uh, uh, fundamental of establish of meaning, established meaning, supposedly, they are the foundation of the book and other they are you know nobody knows what they mean that's what it says okay so now what will happen why allah send verses nobody knows what they mean and they are causing causing a problem he said here that allah and those who their heart they seek discord they will follow those verses okay hold on but who is going to follow the Quran anyway? You know what I mean? Why Allah want to send verses in a book? He sent for guidance. And he is saying in the same verse, those who follow those verses, English is not true translation, so I, I don't care for the English, my friend. They say, I'm showing you your translation. This is the problem with Muslims. You see, I translate, you say, they say you are lying. They translate, they say they are lying. So, okay, so what we do now? We go to the Arabic, no problem. Do you speak Arabic? Here we go. It says, uh, Okay. Those who have a problem in their heart, they follow what it's confusing okay why okay i mean the bible says god is the not the author of the confusion why allah he put confusing verses in the quran and he is saying that the bad ones of you will follow the confusing verses have you ever heard of a stupid thing like this so in his video suppose he's saying i am misleading in the translation but this is what it says you know what? Let us go and see the interpretation. Shall we? I mean, who is lying here? Let us see. We, we have interpretation for the Quran. Let us go. Chapter 3, verse number 7. All right. Let us go to a tafsir. We can go to a Kathir too, just to make them happy. This is Ajalali. Is my internet still coming? It's a miracle because uh, the red here is the, the line is really dead, you know? I'm not sure how it's working. Because in my side it says bad. Okay, this is Tafsir al -Jalalain. Is that a Christian prince? No. Is that my translation? No. Is that my website? No. Is that my English? No. This is the official government of the Kingdom of Jordan. Government website. Okay, what it says. Oh, read carefully with me. And those, as far as for those who uh, in who, whose heart is deviation in inclination away from the truth they follow the allegorical part desiring sedition among the ignorant like, hold on so if you follow quran this is what happened to you guys do you see it and look, the Muslim now talking about Trump, he lose. No, my friend, Trump, he win. He did not lose. It's you, Muslim, who lost. This Biden will beat you shish kebab. Just wait. This is what Obama, he did for eight years. He was Trump, he was taking off his troops from Iraq, from Afghanistan. 
from from Syria from etc Biden will keep them there have fun stupid people so look what happened here the Quran saying that if we follow the Quran Allah have verses in the Quran for those who their heart is bad so those who their heart is bad they follow the Quran verses and that will be make them misleaded and they are saying to me and lying in this book, Allah is saying, and this is the Muslim, who is talking here? Tafsir al-Jalalain. In this book, there's verses will deceive you. Where we can find those verses? Muslims don't know. Which verses? We don't know. Where is? Where are they? They don't know. So, the stupid guy, he is saying, I am lying. Allah, don't deceive here. Well, you are a stupid idiot. This is your scholar saying, yes, Allah, he have verses in the Quran, which too many. And those who they have a problem in their heart, they will follow them. Now, if we ask this idiot, what verses are those verses? He will say, Allah knows best. And here you notice, this is a book of guidance, but in the book of guidance, there's misleading. Because this is what the Quran is saying. Allah, he have verses in the Quran, which are very deceiving, very confusing. And those who they have a problem, they follow those deceiving verses. I thought all the Muslims have to, to, to follow every verse of the Quran. You know what I'm saying? Muslim, should the Muslim follow every verse of the Quran or not? The Quran saying no. Because there is verses in the Quran is made to deceive you. And the ignorant of them, throwing them into a, a, a spacious argument and confusion. Okay, hold on. You just said those, you are the one who said those verses are confusing. And now you are saying they are throwing them in an argument of confusion. I mean, how stupid is that? You know what I mean? I mean, who is the stupid here? It is you who say that those verses are confusing. And then you are saying that those who have a, a ignorant of them, they will throw them in a spaces of a spaces of uh, argument and confusion. But you just said they are confusing. And then he says, and desi the uh, what, uh, and desiring its interpretation uh, and its explanation, and none knows the interpretation of this save Allah. Like what? You just say it, nobody knows what the meaning of those verses save Allah. Which verses? <laughs> like you see, if this God, he said verse number one, verse number two, verse number 10, verse etc. Those are uh, confusing verses. Nobody knows that. Okay, we, so we will not touch them. We will not even try to explain it. But he did not say where in the Quran those verses. So what Allah is doing? And why Muhammad is saying such a thing? The answer is very simple. Muhammad himself do not know what the meaning of those verses. Because he's a thief. He was stealing the book from Warak al It's like me right now. I'm making a book claiming that I am a scientist of mathematics. And yet I do not know 6x6 is, is equal to what? And then you ask me a question. In your book it says 6x6 is equal to whatever. How you come with this conclusion? I say Allah knows best. Anyone will start speaking about Trump, I will send you free shipping and handling. Our topic here is not about Trump. When we talk about Trump, you are welcome. So if you are just a kid, you want us to be stupid, get lost. CP, you are lying. Islam is really uh, peaceful and makes sense. You read in Arabic. Well, Mr. Gritch, uh, can you tell me how it makes sense that Allah is saying to you in his book, there's verses is made to, def to confuse you? And yet he did not tell you where, where, where those verses. And he says, when you those who trans, uh, uh, give them interpretation, they are bad people.
when you see the answer of the Muhammadan, you notice right away that the Muslims who they are trying to answer, refute me, they are on drugs. I mean, what is the answer? Why Allah send in verses and those verses nobody know them and then he accuse you that when you try to give in them interpretation, you are a bad person. How we can find the bad, where we can find them? Do you have a list of them? Did Allah give you a list? No, so you have to guess now. That's mean any verse in the Quran can be a confusing verse and we should not give it interpretation because only Allah knows. It says it clearly, only Allah knows the meaning. Okay, how we know? Which one of those verses? Muslims, which verses only Allah knows their meaning? Did Allah say to you? Did Allah give you like a chapter says this verse and this verse and this verse? Allah, only Allah knows their meaning? No. So how he can accuse you that you are ignorant for trying to Inter give interpretation for a book you believe in because remember he is accusing who accusing Muslims not those who they are not Muslims because I don't follow the Quran we have a proof that Muhammad is a prophet of God okay give me the proof Mr. Grich I don't know if you are just trolling or you are a Muslim for real go ahead give me the proof that Muhammad is a prophet of God I'm waiting for you so you see those idiot. Let us let us change the, the interpretation. This is Ajalalain. Let us go to uh, uh, Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad. <clears throat> the same garbage. And they are guessing which verses. Nobody knows what they mean, save Allah. The proof is in my book. What book? In the Bible? Okay, guys. The proof that Muhammad is a prophet in my book. Let me show you another stupid thing the Muslim they keep saying to us. The Quran says, they say to you in the Old Testament, the prophet Muhammad mentioned. Well, look what your prophet said. Your prophet, he said, that his name is Ahmad and it's mentioned by Isa. So how that is mentioned in the Old Testament? And where is Muhammad? What happened to Ahmad? Hmm? This is supposedly Isa, the one we do not know even what, where Isa came from, saying, there is a messenger will come after me, his name is Ahmad. And this is additional proof that Muhammad's name is a title. It does not, it's not a name. Because if your name is Muhammad, that's it, your name is Muhammad. How how uh, in the morning it is Muhammad, afternoon it's Ahmad, then it's Taha, then it is Shish Kebab, then what, what, what is the name of Muhammad? Is his name Taha? Actually, one of the names of Muhammad is Abu Kapsha. You can search it in Google and you will die laughing at the name. So when the Muslim they say to us that the name of our prophet is not Qatham, well, then how you how the prophet name appear in the Quran way long after he became a prophet? And why sometimes it's called Ahmed, sometimes it's called Muhammad, sometimes it's called Taha, sometimes it's called whatever. I mean, you have tons of names for him. Actually, if we search right now, we will find the Muslim saying that Muhammad have 99 names. I thought only Allah have 19 years. No. Muhammad, you have 99 names. Why he have 99 names? He is Allah? Exactly. Hmm? Muslims trying to make their Muhammad Allah. Allah have 90 name, 99 names. Muhammad, he have 99 names. Here we go. This is the page, read it. The 99 names of the beautiful names of a prophet Muhammad. Have you ever heard of a stupid thing like this? All those names are the name of Muhammad. So this is not his name. And look at the name Muhammad. The name Muhammad is 
a blasphemy against God because you call him the praised one. Well, the praised one is God. All those names are the names of Muhammad. Where do you get those names from? 99 names. Allah have 99 names. Muhammad is equal to Allah. <clears throat> All right? Consider turning off my star. What star? What star picture? I'm not sure. You mean the news? The news line? I don't know what you mean, the star. <clears throat> Forget about if Muhammad now is a real person or not. He's a real idiot for sure. You know, I mean, reading about him. But obviously, Muhammad was not meant to be a prophet. Muhammad was meant to replace the Messiah. That's why they call him Muhammad, the praised one. The praised one. Okay, when, when my screen go off, what I will put for you? A dancing girl? I mean, what the problem with the star? It's a star. Don't look. Uh... <clears throat> Yeah, maybe you have a uh, weak internet, so you are not getting the, the speed. We don't have stars on the screen. So anyway, we have tons of verses in the Quran saying all of them that Muhammad, God, is a deceiver. And obviously, let me show you a very clear example of Allah is a deceiver. This is Muhammad explaining what Allah do. And he say that Allah, he wrote for you a destiny before he created you. And then you start working as you wish, doing as you wish, all your life, or let's say most of it, until there is a distance between you and let us say hellfire. Let's say, here we go, read, let's read together so, so you can understand. Muhammad said, and by Allah, a person among you, or a man, may do the deeds of people of the fire, which means he's a bad person, which means he, you know, he don't kill Christians, he don't rape women, he don't go in the church, behead the women she's praying. This is a bad Muslim. A good Muslim, he would do the opposite. So, a person who do the bad deeds, or an arm, distance between him and the gate of hell. Okay. And then what happened? Read carefully. He's almost there. A cupid or an arm breathe distance between him and fire. But then that is written, which Allah has ordered the angels to write. Proceed. And he does the deeds of people of paradise. And he enter it. Okay, hold on. What does that mean? That's mean anything you do intentionally will not work for you. At the end of the day, is the deception of Allah what is going to work? Because He wrote a program for you, will overcome your decision and will make you act differently. And then he, you see Muhammad the opposite saying, read carefully, and the man may do the deeds of the people of paradise till there is only a cubit or two between him and paradise. And then that is written, proceed, and he does the deeds of the people of hellfire. And he entered it. So the guy praying all his life. Worshipping Allah, joining the Mujahideen, shouting Allahu Akbar. He hate the Christians, he hate the Jews, he hate the Hindus. He's a perfect Muslim. And then what is written by Allah will take over, and then he start acting differently, so he go to hell. He was almost going to go to heaven by his act. But what is written by Allah will take over. But isn't this a deception? Yes. Why? Because the Quran says, if you do this, and you do this, and you do this, you go to heaven. Okay. But here it says, no, 
It says, doesn't matter what you do, it's what Allah he wrote for you. <laughs> Correct? So all your religion is a, is, a, is a garbage. You say to me that Allah don't, de you know, don't deceive you. I'm, I am interested in the meaning. Guys, I'm interested in the meaning. It, it says in front of you, and a man he may do the deeds of people of paradise till there is only a cupid between him and paradise. So he's doing what? Good deeds. And then the writing proceed, writing of who? Of Allah. And he enter hellfire. <coughs> what is this? Do you see it? Tell me now I am switching, I am changing. You know, keep lying to yourself. So yes, Allah is a deceiver because in the Quran, Allah says to you, those who do this and do this and do that, they have no worry, they go to heaven. And then we find that all of this is a garbage. And this is what is called destiny in Islam. So Islam is based on destiny, not in a choice. And this is what you do. It's what Allah wrote for you. Read it carefully. And another one, he act the way uh, of the, the the citizen of hell. Enter there, there remain between him and hell a distance of a cubit. And the writing of destiny overcome him. And he began to act like people of paradise. So he's not a good guy. This guy is a bad guy. But Allah wrote, this guy should go to heaven. So what happened? He start acting differently against his own will and he go to heaven. Do you see it? So is Allah a deceiver? Yes, because he lied to us. He says, if you pray, if you believe, if you say shahada, no, it's, it's, it's destiny. Where is the shahada? You say shahada, you don't say shahada, it doesn't matter. It's what Allah wrote for you. Is the internet going down? Well, it is Sunday, so. Uh, look, look at this. And then what is written by Allah suppresses and he starts doing the opposite, suppresses. And the Muslim, they read this, do you see something wrong in this? I mean, what's wrong with those people? How you accept such a garbage? And look, Muhammad, he said, if you commit adultery, in Islam, you can do adultery, but you have to do it legally. As an example, you can do muta. You can have four wives. All of this is a form of adultery. You can rent a woman, you call her uh, uh, a wife temporarily. Uh, elevator wife, stairs wives, uh, bed, you know, hotel wife for a day or a night or a few hours. But look at this. Even when you commit adultery, Muhammad he says we punish the one who committed adultery. Why are you are punishing him? Because he committed adultery. Okay, but isn't it, isn't it you who said <laughs> that Allah he wrote for you how much adultery you would do? So it's not a choice. Read it. Muhammad said, Verily Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge or indulge in and in which he of necessity must commit. Do you see it? Is adultery is a choice? According to Islam, no. So why are you punishing me? Uh, Grich, if you use a filthy language, I will ban you. Uh, people, this is not a mockery page, not a mockery, uh, you know, we don't care about me, me, hijab, or anyone. So, if you want to use a filthy language, we will block you. And actually, I have to block you now. If you are coming here for calling names, even to Muslims, you are not welcome. You see, when I call a Muslim a donkey, because he speaks like one. But it's not my intention 
to make him look like one. But you speak like a donkey, I call you a donkey. But don't go dirty and go filthy. Actually, when I say it, because I'm upset. When I say to a Muslim, you are talking like a donkey, not because I hate him. I'm not trying even to insult him. I'm trying to make him wake up. So look at this. A Muslim saying to me, you need to read it differently. Okay, read it differently for us. Who's holding you? Guys, you need to read it differently. It says necessity to commit. I mean, what differently? I mean, look at those people. They are the one who publish it. They are the one who translate and they say to me, read it differently. Which he of necessity must commit. Allah has a fixed very portion of adultery, which a man will indulge in and which of he necessity must commit and he's saying to me read it differently so even when you have sex with a woman she is not yours it's Allah who made you do it so why you are punishing him who's a stupid here you are doing it of a necessity it's a not, not a choice he wrote for you a fixed very portion a Muslim woman, she called TV stations asking the Sheikh, she said, I became old and I'm afraid I'm not going to get married. What the Sheikh, he said to her, don't worry. The Prophet said, Maktubun ala kulli farjin ismu nakihu. It's written in every vagina the name of the one who will if it. So he's trying to cool her down. Don't worry, you will get somebody to if you. Excuse my language. Can you believe it in TV? The woman, she is worried. She is getting older. Nobody will marry her. He said to her, don't worry. It's a destiny. It's written there. It's written in your vagina, not in the side of the vagina, in the vagina. And I changed the Muslim to say to me, you're lying. It is written in every vagina, the name of the ones will if it. So if a woman, she work as a prostitute, she would have yellow pages there. Written there? Yes, brother. Why? Because destiny. So don't worry if this guy will sleep with you or not. You know, it's written there. Which means the destiny. He will do it. If his, his name is written there, and I'm sure now many uh, great uh, the believers, women of Allah, they are looking for the names there. Go check it out. Take a take a picture, see something, you know, zoom in. A source, we no problem, we can show you source. We can show you source, we can show you the sauce. <clears throat> Actually, I can find you the video too. Here we go. All those videos in YouTube saying reading the same hadith. Kullu farjin maktubun alayhi ismu nakihihi. Look how many. Look, 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 look. Look, 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 look. Look, 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 look. Oh boy. يعني في حديث يقال ان كل فرج مكتوب عليه اسم ناكحه طبعا نعم حتى في الحرام حتى في الحرام لا هو كل شيء مكتوب حد لا ما هو ده يؤجر وده يؤجر نعم يقال ان كل فرج مكتوب عليه اسم ناكحه the hadith says prophet said that every every uh, uh, vagina is written in it the name of the one who will effort what does sheikh he said this is she is asking the question طبعا نعم he said of course Anyone who anyone who speak Arabic, and here we go. This is the video. Of course, what he said. Of course, this is Egyptian TV, Islamic TV, and a big shake. Of course, the star. Of course, it's written in your vagina too. 
take off your panty and you will see it. It's written there. Check all the names there. I mean, this, and this is TV. I mean, they have no shame. I mean, how those women, you know, they dress, so when, you, when you see those, you know, they dress like as believers, you know, she have hijab. I mean, how, how a woman, she have a decency, she will read even the question. There's a hadith that says that every vagina is written in it in the, in the name of the one who will eff it. What the guy said, of course. It's written there. I don't know where my name is written. <laughs> TV is not approved? Yeah, TV is not approved, but this is a hadith. This is the sheikh. The sheikh would not say, you see, I'm showing you from a sheikh, not from a website. And now you are saying it's not approved. No problem. I can show you the reference. <laughs> Behave yourself, guys. Please don't use. Uh... You see, Islam is dirty language, and we end like speaking like uh, you know. Uh... <clears throat> Let us see. Uh, for sure. Any any book will make Islam look bad. They will say, uh, no. no, that's not true. Not a true, brother. We are trying to show you uh, like a, a, an Islamic website. But as you see, the Muslim already, he, he agreed, the Muslim Sheikh, he agreed, yes. You know, he said, of course. There we go. Uh, the name of the book, page number 135, it says here, مَكْتُوبٌ عَلَى كُلَّ فَرْجٍ اسْمُ نَاكِحَهُ وَكَذَلِكَ شُرْبُ الْخَمْرِ It's written in every vagina, the name of the one who will eff it, and uh, additional to that, uh, uh, drinking wine and killing people, and then even food and drink. And then you don't drink and eat except what Allah He decide for you. And for sure here in the argument they're saying, but this is, doesn't make sense. But this is what Muhammad is saying. Don't you Muslim believe in destiny? What destiny mean? Even the Quran say that even those who they are kuffar, لو شاء الله ما فعلوا. It's Allah will. Read carefully. <clears throat> oh. Let us see. Read carefully, huh? Let us see. All those verses. Look, let us see this one as an example. Yeah. 
if Allah want, if Allah will, He will make you all one nation. But it's not His will. Allah, He, uh, I don't know what to say, what the word, like He, um, He cursed you by making you many nations and you are different, you have differences. So read carefully here. This is the Muslim translation. Uh, okay, that was Allah. If Allah has had so willed, He would, which means one religion, not nations. But His plan is to test you. <laughs> so who is the one who made you many believe Allah? And this is the Muslim translation, not mine. And the and, and, and in Arab, like in Arabic, it doesn't say to test you. It says the yablukum, which means a curse bad bad things it's a curse this is Allah will that you are not a believer <clears throat> Read, read here carefully. Why they are kuffar? Why the kuffar are kuffar? Quran answer. If it had been Allah plan, they would not have taken false God. Do you see it? So it's Allah plan. Is that me saying that? Is that my translation? Where is the Muslims in the chat? Is that my translation? Allah plan is to be kafir. It is Allah who make you kafir or you decide to make you a Muslim. And actually this is can be uh, uh, very much supported by what Muhammad said in the Hadith. If you go here, there's a Hadith about a child, a baby child who die. He never commits sin. He never reached the age of sin. And yet Muhammad, he uh, confirmed that he might go to hell. Why? Because it's destiny. Read it. Do you see it? Aisha, she said to Muhammad after a funeral of a child, she said to him, he will be a bird from the birds of paradise. Why? Because he commit no sin. He has done no evil. And he's been too young for that. Muhammad said to her, don't be stupid. Allah wrote, in, Allah wrote to destiny, when they were in their father backbone see it but this is a baby he's an infant he did not commit any sin yet he will go he might go to hell so this is all his deception that's mean you believe you worship you commit sin you don't commit sin doesn't matter Is that me saying that, or this is your prophet? Why a child, he never commits sin, he did not even reach the age of sin. Look, look, look what Aisha she said. She said to him, Aisha she said, Allah Messenger, there's a happiness for this child who is a bird from the birds of paradise. For it commit no sin, nor has reached the age of when one commits sin. That's perfect to go to heaven. I mean, who is perfect more than this baby to go to heaven? No one. It's pure, innocent. He said, Aisha, per adventure, it might be the otherwise. <laughs> How this is going to be the otherwise? What happened to music? This is the stupid thing, she, you know, opening. Oh boy. I mean, anyone can tell me how in the world this baby would go to heaven? Why he wouldn't go to heaven? He might go to hell. So Allah, he lied to us. They say to you, if you don't commit sin, you go to heaven. The fact, no. 
different hadith. Just to show you the stupidity of this man, his name is Muhammad. This guy is all over the place. He's like a guy who ate too much, I mean, uh, damaged food, and he have a diarrhea, big diarrhea. Uh, let us see. It's a metaphor? Oh, okay. بِقَوْمٍ Let's see. Look what Muhammad said. I'm trying, trying to find the hate in English. It's easy to find it in Arabic, but in English is a different story. Here we go. Read. Read the stupidity and the madness of this madman Muhammad. And this is Sahih. They cannot say it's false. They cannot say it's weak. They can't say all the garbage they have. Muhammad said, it's written by Allah saying, by him, who is hand is my in, in my life if you were not to commit sin Allah would sweep you out of existence and he would replace you by those who would commit sin and seek forgiveness from Allah Islam teach everything against the Bible teaching actually against itself because isn't the Quran agree with the story of the flood of Noah? Why the flood of Noah? Why we have judgment day? We have why we have punishment? Because we commit sin. Judgment day is coming regardless if you ask for forgiveness or not. What this guy is talking about? I mean, this guy is mad. He's all over the place. He contradicts himself. So if you don't commit sin, Allah will kill you. Why? What is the problem? If you don't commit sin, you're a perfect person. That's mean you are worshiping God. Because not worshiping God is a sin. That's mean you are not cheating. That's mean you are not lying. That's mean you are not killing. That means you are not uh, uh, stealing. So what is the problem? No. Allah, he wants people to commit sin. For he is mentally ill. He is obsessed with people crying, asking for forgiveness. Please forgive me. This is what he want. You don't forget. You don't commit sin. Allah is unhappy. Allah is lonely. He want to wake up every day in the morning. Hear millions of people saying to him, "Please forgive me." But if you don't commit sin, he will not say, "Please forgive me." That doesn't work with with Allah. This is a person who is sick. People, don't you agree with me that this is a person who is sick? Imagine you have a father. And this father, he will kill you because you did nothing wrong. And he will let, would like to have a son who commits sin every day. And the end of the day, he says, please, father, forgive me. <laughs> have you ever seen such a stupid religion? have you and then they will say to you this is false translation but this is not my translation so yes Allah is a deceiver yes Allah is a fraud Allah is sick Allah is the devil this is a, this is a behavior of the devil a guy with the two horn in his head he is just making fun of us he is playing us he is uh, uh, he's lonely he is abusing us uh, he commits sin, commits sin, so you can cry for me. Hey, come on, do it, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kiss my shoes. Yeah, uh huh. Okay, now I forgive you. Go. Okay, now. But next. But if you don't. Exactly. According to the hadith, Allah, He is the one who deceived Adam and Eve. So the story is endless. And I say to you, you have to be mentally ill. Mentally ill 
to believe in such a garbage. Now you want to believe, you don't believe, this is your business. But it's obvious. This book is a stupid book. And garbage in, garbage out. Hey, cry for me, hey, cry. Yeah, okay. Who, who commits sin today? Come to me, come on, come on. Okay, bow down, bow down. Yeah, okay, kiss my toes, lick my toes. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, wash your ass before you talk to me, okay? Uh-huh, yeah. In the morning, put nose, put water in your nose. Ah, uh, okay. Five times, five times, you do it five times. Uh-huh, okay, now I'm, okay, you did all those things? Okay, I will forgive you. Okay, come back tomorrow. Tomorrow you come back for the same garbage. You commit sin because now you don't worry about it. You do as much as you want, just do sin. Ask Allah for forgiveness. Bingo, you are done. Right? Done. That's what he's saying, it's in front of you. And if you don't commit sin, Allah will destroy you. So, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a Muslim woman, a convert woman, she married a Muslim man, and those women are obviously, they, they are suffering from a problem, it must be lonely to the point you are willing to marry such a person from such a religion who would believe in beating you. Something wrong with you. So anyway, in the website, maybe I can find it actually, hold on. Uh, she's asking the sheikh that my her husband, uh, her husband, he did lie to her. Let us see. So anyway, she is asking the sheikh about the husband lying to her about marrying a new wife. I found one, but I don't know if this is the same one. Let us see. Because I did read it many, many long time ago. I have been married for 15 years and we have three kids. My husband uh, has remarried without informing me and he has been lying to me for the past year. Uh -huh. Okay, now she's asking the Sheikh, is it right for him to, to lie for me? I cannot trust him because he is lying to me for the whole year. Okay, so this woman, she is crying out for what happened. Look at the Muslim answer. First of all, we ask Allah to make things easy for you. Uh -huh. Okay. And then he start humiliating the women. Let us see if this is the same one. Uh, uh, firstly, the husband is allowed to marry a second wife, provided that he just been his two wives, between two wives. Okay, and then he says to her, lying is a kutumbetal, uh, uh, Compatible, 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 an outrageous behavior, and it is forbidden except in some cases <laughs> permitted by Sharia, <laughs> such as husband and wife lying to each other. <laughs> Brother, lying is forbidden in Islam, but it's permitted in some cases in Sharia. Okay, like what? Lying to the Christians, lying to the Jews, lying to the Hindus, lying to the atheists, and wives and husbands lying to each other. <laughs> and this stupid woman, she is asking, oh, he's lying to me, oh, he's not a good Muslim. And then he, he shock her saying, he can't lie to you, you stupid idiot. He can't lie to you. Who said he cannot? And you can lie to him too. And now they will say to me, a Christian prince is lying. Who won the fatwa? Who won it? Who won the link? Ladies, don't you want the link to show it to your friends? Who want to marry a Muslim man? He don't feel guilty if he lie to you. He can go sleep around. He don't have to tell you. It is his right to lie to you. And it's your right to lie to him too. <clears throat> uh, 
Actually, the one I did read is different story. This is a different story. But I just searched in Google about this. Prophet said it's permitted to lie for people to lie in three cases. <laughs> a wife lying to her husband and a husband lying to his wife. Huh? I mean, that's wonderful. It's so lovely. Oh boy. I want to be a Muslim. My wife, she asked me, Hey, CB, where you been last night? Oh, last night I was in the mosque all day praying to Allah. I was so, so much sweating. Well, you sweating? Why? The mosque have no air condition? Oh, I mean, I mean, I was like, you know, I was okay. I mean, it was too much. Uh-huh. <laughs> I posted the link. You guys did not see the link? I did. What? Well, I mean, this is religion. This is religion. The the husband. I mean, he he is he is telling the, the women. What's wrong with you? He can't lie to you about lying. The woman she is crying says he was lying to me for the whole year. He can lie to you all your life. You stupid. He is permitted to lie. Look at the question. The woman she is suffering. He's lying to me all the year. He go a vacation to Jordan, and then I found that he is not visiting his family. He is doing boom boom there. <laughs> you know. Okay. And then the answer was. You stupid at you. You don't marry, you don't know you are marrying who? You are marrying a Muslim. This is Islam. Firstly, and look look how the Muslim they say. Firstly, the husband is allowed to marry second wife. This is firstly. Secondly, lying is compatible and outrageous behavior. It is outrageous behavior, by the way. And it is forbidden, except in some cases, it's permitted by Sharia, such as husband and wife lying to each other <laughs> for a good cause. Guys, the guy, he want to sleep with different one. This is good cause. I mean, do you see the good cause? They, they always justify anything. They call it good goes. The guy, he have a penis, excuse my language, and his penis is having a good cause. So Abdul is going now to Jordan. And now he's going to Jordan for good cause. Why? Because his penis told him there's a nice woman in Jordan. She looked nicer than his wife. He want to do boom to her. So this is good cause. And because his penis have a good cause, now he's allowed to lie to his wife because the good cause of the good penis is giving him the permission. This is a good cause. Can the wife do the same? You know, once once a Muslim neighbor she told my mom, my mom she kept she asked her, why you keep changing the like the the the, the you know uh, the house furniture, the curtains. I mean, you just installed one six months ago. You will see their furniture, they get damaged so fast. I mean, they just bought the furniture. So what's happening? She said, if I don't do that, my husband will marry another woman. The second he have some saving, he will go and get a new one. So I have to keep him exhausted, have zero money in his pocket. This is the truth. They will keep complaining. They will they, they they put a cigarette in the curtain. They put cigarette in the in the in the couch. They put cigarette everywhere to damage that. For, so he will buy a new one. He will not have money. Otherwise, if he have money, he will find a new woman, brand new, zero mileage. Excuse my language. This is Islam. I don't know how many women they should marry now a Muslim. That's a good choice, actually. I mean, he will never tell you I'm, I, I'm sleeping with the other women. At least, you know, this is good, nice, very nice. Like you say, you don't know, you have no idea. You're watching Netflix. You're watching Netflix and he's doing boom boom. 
Yeah. Anyway, I think we have enough for today. Don't forget to download the video. We will see if we go live on air tomorrow, maybe morning, if we can. Until then, we say, may the Lord bless you. And may the Lord have mercy in the stupid ones. Never marry a Muslim. Marrying from somebody his religion permit him to lie to you is a stupid mistake. He will never feel guilty. He will enjoy lying to you. He will be sleeping with four women and he don't have to tell you anything about it. He will bring you AIDS. He will bring you diseases. This is why you go, you know, go to uh, go in Ramadan. The month of Ramadan is the month of sex tourists in Thailand, in Philippines, etc. They leave Ramadan from Saudi Arabia because they cannot do things there in certain time. There's too much watch. So they fly where as sex tourists. They go there, they have sex with all the prostitutes and they come back home and they sleep with you. What do you expect? And by the way, this is goes for all men, not only Muslim men. If you are a man who sleep around, shame on you. Because if you don't want to be lawful, or sorry, faithful to your wife, why you marry? Stay single. If you are a person who like to sleep around, you don't care for God, you don't believe in, in, in the indecency, you think it's okay, okay why you want to get married? Don't get married. Go do what you want. Because now you go sleep around, you bring a disease to your wife. Very disgusting behavior. And this is what Muhammad he did to his wives, by the way. If you remember, Muhammad he confirmed that his wives are, you know. Uh, they have a sexual fluid which is their orgasm and Muhammad confirmed that the sexual fluid of his wives is yellow is yellow okay why it is yellow because obviously they have sexual disease how they got how they got the yellow orgasm from where they got the sexual disease the answer is very simple multi partners the message of Allah said yellow ask any doctor when the women she would have a sexual fluid which is yellow go check right now search Google And that's mean all the wives of Muhammad, they have a sexual disease, including him. Otherwise, why Muhammad is seeing only women having such a thing? That's mean every woman he sleep with her, she have the same issue. We have a Muslim, his name is Muslim Prince. He says, Al-Islam is the truth. Okay, is the truth, yeah. Who said that shaitan is not true? There's a, there's a shaitan, correct guys? There's a shaitan we believe. There's evil we believe. Who said that shaitan, evil is not a truth? It's the truth. There is shaitan. There is angels. So when you say Islam is the truth, Islam is the truth, evil. And the proof in front of you. Your prophet is the devil himself. And we prove it, obviously. You know, when a person, he make verses in the Quran, and he claimed that Allah told him, any woman she want to, if her, she is welcome. Islam is the truth. What the truth is there? The truth is that Muhammad is a horny man using God to control you. He is the devil. Look at this verse. 
long verse only about women who Allah made lawful for Muhammad to have sex with. Nobody left. Nobody left. The whole town, including any Muslim women, she offered herself to the Prophet. Read it. This is from God. God, he sent him a message saying to him, any woman she like to offer herself, and this is only to Muhammad. Muslim men, they cannot have that. Only to Muhammad. This is the truth. Muhammad have a special privilege about his pocket and his penis. This is why the God of Muhammad is Mr. Penis God. Right? They are not jihadists, they are a bunch of kids. If they are jihadists, they will go and join ISIS, but they are coward. They used to say, we want to kill you, but they don't dare even to say that no more. I don't know what happened to them. What's wrong with you, Muslims? Shame on you. Nobody want to kill me no more? I'm really bored. What's wrong with you? I received, I used to receive like 10 uh, messages a day at least, like we will kill you, we will find you, blah, blah, blah. No, nobody is doing that no more. What's wrong? We need, we need some entertainment. <clears throat> there is a video made by a Muslim. He was asking, he was saying, how we can examine if a prophet is a false prophet? He said, number one, a false prophet, he asked for a privilege for his own. I mean, all of Islam is about privilege to Muhammad. Muslim can have only four wives, Muhammad have unlimited. Muslim, they cannot have offer of a woman give herself to Muhammad, he can. Muhammad have the best of the booty. Muhammad, he had the biggest TV. Muhammad have the fifth of the booty. Muhammad is the is the, the, the highest rank for Allah. The Muslim, they have to pray to Muhammad, asking Allah to give him the highest rank. I mean, everything is about Muhammad. Uh, Muslim friends, you know, either you, you post in English or get lost. Let me block you. He is as, he's praying to Allah. May Allah punish you in the grave. I mean, look how stupid you are. You're a prophet, he promised you that 99 dragons will go inside your anus. And this is why Muslim Sunni, when they die, they push a piece, piece of, of cotton and clothing inside their anus and they push it hard with a stick. Why? Because Muhammad he said, a blind dragons will go inside the grave and they will go inside your ass. This dragon have 99 head, each head have nine, seven, seven heads. 99 head and each head have seven heads. All of them in the anus of Mr. Muslim Prince. There's a hadith about a Muslim who passed away. I don't know if anyone have it in English. If somebody have it in English, post it. Uh, the guy, he died. And then the Muslim, they start, they are confused about if he's dead or not. One of them, he said he is not dead. That they said, no, he's dead. He said, no, he's not. He said, okay, how you know? He said, put your finger in his anus. And if it is cold, he is dead. If it is not, he's not. And then everybody was attending the funeral, start placing his finger in the anus of the Muslim man. Can you believe that there is such a hadith? Like, I mean, it's, it's impossible to believe in those stories. Everyone in the funeral start placing his finger in the anus of the guy. And why they are doing that? They want to prove that this guy is not dead or is dead. <clears throat> uh, go to the Shia Pan website, you will see it there. It's called Shia Pan. I think the page, uh, the, the article called, because it's they have it translated, you know, uh, those hadith are in Arabic. Uh, <coughs> let me see if I can find it. Muslim, Sunni, Morality. Okay, I think you will find it in this page. 
if not this page in this in that website with a translation here we go <clears throat> Shia pan this is a Shia website but they are quoting for you authentic stories from Muslim Sunni books sex with watermelon uh, masturbation uh, female sex toys I mean you name it look here the sheikh is saying the women she can use a crimbage a crimbage is like zucchini you know a big zucchini you know those long one so the woman she can use zucchini or a piece of leather uh, or it which is supposed to be a, a, a made up penis sex toy worked into a piece of leather walk into becoming shaped like a penis and then she inserted herself this is a muslim sunni different one example of muslim sunni morality some uh, sunni ulama which means scholars have ruled the uh, principality of having sex with watermelon i mean even watermelon this is not shia sunni you idiot this is not shia source you stupid the shia they are making fun of you they are showing you what you believe in they are showing you the page number the book name this is shia source no it's not <clears throat> having sex with watermelon and then and then the shia they are asking question to the sunni says well it seemed that nasibi they call the sunni nasibi logic having sex with many as many a women as one can afford uh, utterly immoral but having sex with as many watermelon as one can afford is not <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I was going to leave soon. What happened? <coughs> Fourth example of Sunni morality. A Salafi woman can suckle Salafi man. Suckle me. <laughs> oh boy. I continue. And here they are showing you the reference. You see? Sahih Muslim. Hadith number 3426. Okay, uh, and they are showing you the books from uh, Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, etc. Big sheikhs. Rida al Kabir, a Muslim man, can suckle uh, from a Muslim woman. Okay. Fifth example of Sunni morality: bestiality can be performed during Hajj. What? Yes, sex with animals in the Hajj. If he had sexual intercourse with an animal, that will not make his Hajj void. What? Uh, the reference in front of you. Six example of Sunni morality: pedophilia, bestiality, and necrophilia can be performed while one is fasting. I'm not going to read it all. Let me read it. Here we go. This is the reference. You see the reference? Look, this is the reference. The page number, the book name, the volume. You name it. <coughs> Sex with animals and dead people and masturbation does not inv inv uh, invalidate one fast uh, provide ejaculation does not occur. What? Ah, this is Sunni Islam. Okay. Seven examples of Sunni morality. The principality of a praying behind a drunken person. Eh, this is not a big deal. Forget. All you are drunk anyway. Eight examples of Sunni uh, eighth example of principality of paying women for sex without fear of Islamic punishment. Would you Shia, you do that? I mean, the Shia are making fun of the Sunni for doing that? Don't you do muta? Uh, ninth example of Sunni morality, Fatwa Abu Hanifa, principality of having sex with one mother. Ah, have sex with your mother, so what? I mean, it's, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, you know, Abu Hanifa, they have, you know, if you have sex with your mother, it's not a problem. I mean, it's 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 endless. You can read it. You know, go read it yourself. I'm not. This is not Shia. This is not Shia. You idiot. This is Sunni. Read the reference. All of those are Sunni reference. Are you stupid or what? This is not Shia books. Stop being a donkey. We keep saying to him, this is Sunni books. He says Shia is not reference. 
This is Sunni books. Shia is not reference. This is Sunni books. Shia is not reference. This is not Shia. This is a Muslim. This is Shia website making fun of you. Quoting the reference from your books. This is not. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, Aisha actually she used to have a she, she used to have a like a, a a consulting show for sex toys and sex. Look, uh, Aisha give ex uh, sex advice for Sahaba. <laughs> expert, she's expert. Uh, Sunni morality. Rasulullah would give sex advice uh, sessions. Uh, to Sahaba in the presence of Aisha, he's teaching his friends how to do boom boom in the front of his wife. Okay, uh, here, uh, example of seniority Muawiyah, legitimate, uh, okay, adultery of his father. Hmm. All of those, look, God, look at this garbage. Look. Rasulullah touching women before marriage. Um, yeah. But one of the most funny ones is this one. 21st example of Sunni morality. Omar placed his hand in the camel anus. anus. <laughs> oh Oh boy, look what Omar he said. Omar al Khattab, he put his his hand inside the anus of the camel, and he he said, "I am afraid that someone might ask me what's wrong with you." <laughs> well, yeah, what's wrong with you? <laughs> What are you doing there? Are you looking for the keys of your car? Why your hand inside the anus of the camel? What are you doing there? <laughs> okay. Uh, the medicine that is needed for the, to treat the disease was used extensively by the second Khalifa. This medicine prepared from certain chemicals, then preparing solution, either vinegar or wine inserted in the anus of the patient. Okay, well, uh, uh, Abu Jahl had an adduction to the anus. His anus had white spots, and he used to paint it with uh, saffron so that customer would not be reprosed. Okay, Omar, special mail assistant. Okay, uh, Omar would ask questions retaining sex from his own daughter. Okay, uh, Sunni method. Yeah, I think in different page you need to find the other page. There's many pages. They have tons of uh, articles about those things. You need to search for them. <clears throat> but one of the funny things is where the guy, the caliphate, Uthman, when he was, he said, one, one of the Muslims, he said, if I know <clears throat> who killed Uthman, I'm going to do, do this and this to him, which, you know, he will if him. Excuse my language. A gay, he heard the man saying that so he put his hand up and he said i am the one who killed uthman then the muslim soldier he put the man down he make him bend over and he start doing boom boom to him revenging for uthman because he said if i know who did that to uthman i'm going to do f him then the homosexual underneath of him he said if i know that king uthman will get me into this I would love to kill Uthman every day. You will find this story in the same website, it's there with a the reference.
<clears throat> he said, if I know that King Uthman will get me into a punishment like this, which means somebody doing boom boom to him, I would love to kill Uthman every day. Every day. Hmm. I'm sure now many Muslims would like to kill the Caliphate. But I don't know where the story in this page. Let us see if we can find it. Anyway, you can search for it. We gave you the website. <clears throat> Maybe here. Uh, oh, no. Okay. But here they are confirming that the caliphate are, are homosexual too. And calling like Muawiyah. Let us see. Yeah, I think it's in different page, not in this page. Because I cannot find it. <clears throat> anyway, I think we have enough for today. <clears throat> is that what you are looking for? I don't know what is that. Anyway, you got the idea. You know, this is this is a this is a very trashy cult. I mean, who in the world would I believe in such a garbage? Garbage ain't garbage out. Go and read. We cannot compare, forgive me, Lord, for saying this, but go read any speeches of the disciples or the, the words of Jesus and compare between what they say and this garbage here. I mean, how in the world anyone wanna believe in such a garbage? <clears throat> Well, anything is not is embarrassing for Muslim. They say it's not authentic. Anything, anything, and anything, even if it's not authentic, the Muslim they will say it's good. As an example, Muslim they say to you, Muhammad, he said, seek uh, seek uh, uh, knowledge, even if it's in China. But this is not exist. This hadith does not exist. Nobody agree with it. But they like it. They promote it. The Prophet said so. Seek knowledge even in China. But the Prophet himself did not know how to write, how to read according to you. Right? <clears throat> anyway, I think we have enough for today. I'm losing my voice. I want to say thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And uh, we gave you many references today. And I hope you saved them. Especially ladies here. I hope you save the link where it says a woman a husband He can lie to her to his wife and you have no right To question why he's lying This is very good for listen listen for women So if you're ever a woman who would a Muslim trying to fool you to make you marry him First of all a Christian woman. She cannot marry a Muslim. This is not marriage. This is adultery Marriage in Christianity have to be between two believers as simple as that. Anything else is adultery. Secondly, uh, Muslims don't believe in marriage. It's a, just a sex contract. This is why he can release you by making one statement. It's a contract in the hand of one person. Number three, Muslim he have no problem lying to you, and we show you the reference. Number four. He can sleep with many as he want, additional to you, and he have no problem. As an example, if he have a maid, he can sleep with his maid. This is not cheating Islam. Any woman, any woman, she take her income or let us say her living 
from you according to Islam you can sleep with her which means a secretary if, if you are a person who own a company all the women who work in the company they are yours <clears throat> and nikah does not mean marriage it's mean the f-word all right anyone you know anyway women they make mistake they make decisions and then you pay for it you pay for it this is why Muslim women when they get married they don't they didn't they knew this is not marriage they knew that they can be thrown out any time and like you know, in America if you uh, or in the West in general if you divorce your wife she will take half of your money in Islam no I remember uh, a kid was with me in school he you know he did not come for a few days so you know we check on him why not why are you not coming he said my father he divorced my mother after more than 30 40 years marrying her and then he said and he gave her her uh, what they call it like dowry you know he gave her her dowry her dowry is not even equal to a hundred dollar when she married him 40 years ago this money was a lot so she asked like let's say she told him to write in the contract like let's say uh, one hundred thousand dollars in the local currency but after 30 40 years that money will not even buy a TV this is what she came with after serving a man all her life he threw her like a piece of garbage because she is now old and he got a brand new wife she is very young right Uh, you are going to marry my daughter first of all I don't have a daughter I'm not married uh, secondly my children will be very educated and they will make your daughter leave Islam and they will spit at you because obviously you are a filthy person coming here to insult me saying you will marry my daughter a filthy person like you are is not allowed even to get close to my daughter if I have one <clears throat> Go and find someone she do muta, like your mother as an example. We can show you right now the fatwa that you can have sex with your mother. Actually, in the Shia pan, the website we showed you, it says that. It says you can have sex with your mother. All right. Well, I'm not sure about your sister, my friend. What what is your religion now? But it's, you know, you need to help your sister. If she if she marry a Muslim or she convert to Islam, you have to help her. I don't know what language you speak. If you speak uh, if you speak uh, Basha, Basha, okay. Indonesian, we have my book for free. All right. For me, I will never marry a Muslim woman because simply, first of all. I cannot marry a Muslim woman. I am a Christian. I'm not going to allow someone to deceive my children, someone to fool them, transform them into people who they believe in killing, terrorism, just to get some versions. I will never do that. It's against the Bible. The darkness and light, they cannot be under one roof. And if there, even if there is no women left in this earth, I will never marry a Muslim woman. You know? <clears throat> uh, and why? I mean, why anyone want to do that? I mean, yeah, there's there's many, hundreds of millions of Christian women. Why you want to marry a Muslim woman? And why women? She want to marry a Muslim man. Why there's no men left? by the way Muslim men because they don't believe in marriage they marry anyone it's very easy for them to marry you they marry you two weeks after they dump you because marriage for them is just to sleep with you it's not like to make a family you might like a, let's say you might get lucky someone here is coming from a good family is different maybe I mean but this is very very rare very rare right <clears throat> Uh, 
I'm sure. Uh, you know, I mean, there is many women. They are they would they would love to marry a good person. So a Christian man should marry a Christian woman. Someone agree with you, believe in the same belief you believe, so your children will not be confused and they will not be victims of your stupid decision. We don't want that in your life. Remind you of your Greek dad. Okay, where what part of Greece you are from, Maria? Actually, I'm invited to go to Greece. Uh, last time I went there, uh, they invited me to go and do a seminar, but I, I didn't, you know, I, I could not make it. <clears throat> yeah. I love it, actually, I love Greece. Very beautiful country and very nice people. Tell us about the source. What source? You must have no source. You have no source. What source? What is the source of the Quran? Nobody. A guy, he claims somebody squeezed him and he gave him verses. <laughs> what is your source? Do you have source? And where is the Quran? The Quran itself, you don't have it. It's the gospel? What gospel? And you know, one of the stupid things in Islam, by the way, is Muhammad using words he should not use. As an example, look, if you ask Muhammad, what is the name of the book of the Christians? He say Injil. But Injil is a Greek word. So Allah called the gospel Injil? <laughs> this is what Allah called it? Allah, he sent down in jail. I mean, isn't it obvious? And the funny, the Muslim, they say that Isa, he was sent to the Jews. So he was sent to the Jews and his book is in Greek language. And the book name is in jail. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid cult like this? Why Allah is calling the book in jail? Allah, he speak Greek? Is it your God, Allah, he says, we never send the messenger except in the language of the tongue of his people? So the people of Jesus now, they are Greek people? This is a contradiction for the Quran. The Quran is supposed to the Muslim, they claim that this is an additional name for the, the, the Quran, but no. It's the supposed to the book who show you the, the, the difference between the truth and the false. But it doesn't make sense. Any Muslim can tell us why the name of the book is Injil? Why Injil? What, what happened? Do you know what Injil means? <laughs> Stupid cult. This is what happened when you have a prophet is a thief. And this will remind me when Muhammad he spoke about the father of Abraham. Because you don't know anything about Abraham. He said that Abraham, he said to his father, Azar. So what Muslim understand from this and Muhammad? That the father of Abraham, his name is Azar. Look how stupid. Muhammad do not know what the word means. This is Aramaic word. He heard it. So he said to himself, oh, this is the name of the father of Abraham. His name is Azar. But Azar means foolish. <coughs> So the stupidity of Muhammad is beyond imagination. He was quoting from the book of Warak ibn Nawfal that Abraham, he said to his father, foolish, are you going to worship idols? So the stupid Muhammad, he thought that the word foolish is the name of, the, of, of, of Abraham's father. 
I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid prophet more than this? The word foolish became the name of the father of Abraham. And then you ask yourself, okay, why and how in the world the Jews, they want to change the name of, Muhammad, uh, of Abraham father and, the, and this book written thousand of years before Muhammad. Why the Jews they will change? Why the why the name of the father of Abraham is not is not Azar in the Bible? What happened? Huh? Well, this is what happened when you have an Azar prophet. His name is Muhammad. So the word foolish because Muhammad he look, it says his father Azar. So Azar, what does that mean? Because it's a foreign word, they don't know what it means. So they thought this is a name. So he said to his father Azar, they thought this is the word mean that his father, his name is Azar. And the same goes all over. Mary, the mother of Jesus, her father is the same father of Moses. How Mary father became the father of Moses? Do you know, do you know the difference between them? How many years? A fraud, stupid, person his name is Muhammad anyway it's time to go I'm losing my voice thank you very much guys for being here may the Lord bless you feel free to download the videos before we take them down we will we will move them very soon so download them and thank you again for those who support us in patreon we appreciate your help and support and uh, if you like to learn more feel free to read my books a lot of guidance of Allah exist in my books I heard once a Muslim saying because of my book a lot of people convert to Islam so Muslims why don't buy it don't you want people to convert to Islam buy it read it take it to the mosque tell your friends so people will convert to Islam because this is what our mission is about. We want people to convert to Islam. So nobody sleep lonely. You go to bed, you will find a lot of women who have no panties. Oh, beautiful. Your private part will be endless. How oh, beautiful. You sleep in the bed, you lay down in your back, your private part in galaxy number seven, Star Wars, how oh, beautiful. The FBI, they will call you, your penis is a blocking Air Force One in the way of a Trump. How beautiful. The Chinese, they will call you, Chim -ho, him -ho, him -ho, which means your penis destroy many of our satellite. How beautiful. Who don't want that? Who can reject that? Very beautiful. This is the only religion can provide you such a promises. How beautiful. Your wife ass will be one mile. How beautiful. All of us will like big big screen TV. Don't lie. Who don't like big screen TV? Size doesn't matter. One mile is the size of her ass. I'm not going to talk about the size of her private part in the front. How beautiful. I'm not going to ask if she do poo, -poo how big her poo, poo will be, but how beautiful. I'm not going to question where well, I'm going to get her a panty because <clears throat> I mean it's so big how beautiful I'm not going to question what will happen if she fart and somebody smoking a cigarette how much methanol will come from her butt how beautiful I mean it's so beautiful in the heaven of Allah a Muslim man will be 90 mile tall and 60 centimeter wide how beautiful. And your wife, she will be 30 miles tall. How beautiful. You look like a warm man. How beautiful. I mean, why you are 90 miles tall and she is 30 miles? And why 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 are you getting so big? I mean, what is that? How beautiful. Hmm? And please show respect that Allah teaching. How beautiful. <clears throat> We are not going to go in more details because all of it is so beautiful and you might start crying. I mean, it's so lovely and so, 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 so amazing, so beautiful.
Did you see the Muslims? They are crying when they recite the Quran. So beautiful. Cut their head, brother. Cut their fingers. Allah Akbar. This is very touching, brother. This is so beautiful. Beat your wife, brother. This is so beautiful. The Quran teaches us good manner with our wives. Beat your wife. How beautiful. Very touching. I have sex with the children. How beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Everything in Islam is beautiful. Except Allah and His Messenger. <laughs> Final word. This is how I see Islam. Islam is like a grave covered by marble from outside, but inside it's a grave. It doesn't matter what how much money you spend on it. It doesn't matter matter how what, what kind of a granite and marble you cover it with. It's a grave. Islam is a grave. And those who believe in Islam, they are dead people. They lost God. They have no salvation. Only the Messiah can save you. Only the Messiah have no sin. Only the Messiah have authority. And even in your stupid cult, the Messiah right now, as we speak, he is in heaven and your prophet is dead, routing with ants and cockroaches. Only one is a living God is my God. Even in your book, my God, the Messiah, is alive. Once an old man, a big sheikh, he asked my father, he said to him, you are a very important man from a very important family. Would be great if you convert to Islam and follow Prophet Muhammad. My father politely, he said to the man, he said, well, uh, just a question. Where is the Prophet Muhammad now? He said to him, he is dead. He said to him, where is Jesus now? The man, he said, he is in heaven, alive. So my father, he said, well, for now, I'm going to follow the living one. You follow the dead. Only fool, they follow the dead because they have the brain. We follow the living Messiah. Even in your cult, you cannot deny that he is the living Messiah. While everybody die, the Messiah is in the sky, watching us, laughing at the fool, feeling sorry for the dummy, and asking us to save you. We are following the living God. You are following the dead Muhammad. And the Lord, the Messiah, he said, let the dead bury the dead. All of us, we are dead. It's just a matter of time but there is people that will be remembered and there is people will not be remembered and we want to be sure that every single one of you will be remembered how by saving somebody before you go don't think and don't ever think that you should not care because time will go and you will go and you better take with you some fuel some investment but this investment is not money it's not oil. It is saving others. God don't want selfish people to be in his house. He want loving people. And loving people, they save others, care for others. So imagine you spend your life, all your life is gone, and you could not even save even your son to believe in Jesus. Or your daughter, or your wife, or your husband. You could not just guide anyone. You could not help anyone. So what you did, what you, how you spend your life, Time will come and your life will be taken from you. And then everything you did is going to be written in the book of life or the book of death. So write your own book. Be sure that your name will be written in the book of life. Be remembered. The Lord, he said, to those who they are hypocrite liars, depart from me, I do not know you. Don't be one of those. The Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. Ask yourself today before you go to bed, what fruit I had for the Lord through all my life until now. If the Lord, he took my soul tonight and I did not wake up in the morning, what is my fruit? 
that question nobody can answer it but you and if you have no fruits you better work hard because he will recognize you from your fruits and the fruit is not the money you give it's not the donation the, those things happen automatically from a person who have a belief you cannot bribe God we are not Muslims if you give me donation you're not going to go to heaven no you cannot bribe God you cannot people who do give the poor people who help missionaries they are doing that this is automatic because they are good they have good heart the fruit is all and everything you believe in and you do not just one thing don't be a fool say okay I am a sinner I am bad I'm going to do this and that and then I'm going to give five dollars to the church and that supposedly will make you a good person no you cannot bribe God the fruit we are talking about is not about money the fruit we are talking about is about loving others saving others and not to be selfish and that will solve many problems in life for people around us so if you are a mother love your children if you are a husband love your wife if you know somebody have no friends be friend to them if you know somebody is old take care of them stay away from bad people but yet try to teach them how to be good there's many things we can do to get the good fruits and the best fruit you do you bring someone who don't believe in Jesus to believe that is your best investment never go to God alone they say God look all those behind me they were not believing in you and I brought them to you then then you deserve to be who you are I am Siri I am Siri this is iPad talking iPad have a fruit better than others <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> anyway <sighs> thank you all for being here uh, we have Muhammad Saeed he posted sources for you and uh, Muhammad Saeed he is the person who have a lot of sources before we go Muhammad Saeed as long as you are talking about sources do you agree with your prophet when he said that shaitan he fought when you say the name of Allah Do you agree? <clears throat> you don't want to, those serious and uh, this this uh, get better stuff next time? No, I don't. I don't have better stuff. I, you know, I have to repeat myself. I'm like your prophet. He keeps saying the same. Do you agree with your prophet when he said that Shaitan he fought? when he hear the name of Allah I'm just trying to examine the intelligent you have do you agree with that source or not that shaitan he fought each time he hear the name of Allah are you okay with those sources this is your religion and this is what you are defending a stupid man, his name is Muhammad, saying stupid things, and all these stupid fool people will believe in it. And I, I challenge you to say, this is make sense. Really? He darted? Yeah, he darted. He's in front of you. Are you making fun of your prophet? Muhammad Said, are you making fun of your prophet? Obviously you are not. Respecting him. It's in front of you. It's on the screen. And here we go. 
Guys, he's saying, really, he farted? He's making fun of Muhammad, see? This is Islam. So what do you do now? Hmm? Do you have a resource against this resource? I mean, your God is very good in making fun of himself. Shaitan, he fought when you say the name of Allah. Wisdom, knowledge, that's deep. That's yoga. Don't tell that to the Hindus. They will make a story about it. They will start doing farting too. Right? Don't you want to give us some source of this? Well, what is the proof? How your prophet, he knew shaitan, he fought. Do you have an answer for that? What is the proof? How Muhammad, he knew that shaitan, he fought when you say Allah. <clears throat> Where he is farting? It's in front of you. It says farting. Here we go. Are you blind? Wait. Shaitan, when Shaitan he hear the call of a prayer, he turn back and break winds. Do you see the word break wind? In Arabic is Dorot. Yeah, he fought. Only prophet of God he have such information, obviously. I mean, a, a normal person he will not have. So either you have to accept that Muhammad is a stupid, crazy person, superstition, full of garbage stories, or you, you know, you see, which one you accept? Tell me, do you accept this story? And this is what I noticed. I was talking in the, you know, mic for like five minutes about Jesus and Muhammad Saeed is now is excited because I don't give him attention. The second you give him attention, they, they you know, they, they fought it. <clears throat> The shaitan is doing this, isn't it CP? Are you stupid or what? This is what we are saying, shaitan is doing, do you believe it? Do you believe shaitan he fought when you say the name of Allah? I mean, how stupid Muhammad is to insult Allah? And, how, and, what, and what does this have to do with anything? I mean, why in the world even you are telling me such a stupid thing? Can we hear it? Can we see it? No. Is there any proof of it? No. What Muhammad is talking about? So what does that mean? Shaitan, he fought when you say Allah, he do poo, poo when you say Muhammad? What is next? What happened to Shaitan when we say Muhammad? Is Shaitan doing it, dude? <laughs> Don't use bad language, Christian soldier. Anyone who use the WTF and you, and you call yourself a Christian, how you use the WTF word, my friend? Clean your mouth. Don't speak as they speak in the street. Don't speak like street people. Clean your mouth. Learn how to speak decent. Decent language is good. Faithy language will not make any better of us and will not make people respect me or respect you. So shaitan, yeah, it's the devil doing that, dude. The dude is you. You are doomed. Shaitan, he fought. Prove it. Ah, this is explaining why the mosque smells so bad. You know, in the Middle East, we use always to use the mosque as a bathroom because there's mosque in every corner. So you're like, you are walking the street, you don't know where to go. The mosque. You will see the mosque. Everybody's going to the mosque, but not, but not to pray, especially in a busy area like market area. They go inside the bathroom. Everybody is going to the bathroom. Nobody is going to pray. The bathroom is the only busy place. And it smells so disgusting. Anyway. <clears throat> Thank you guys again. This time I'm leaving for sure. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> I'm here for more than two hours. Supposedly we'll be here again for 50. You know what? Tomorrow I will take vacation. <laughs> My 15 minutes is horrible. 
I am the last one to say 15 minutes. I don't know how to do I, I, I You know what? I'm going to put a, uh, like a clock. Next time when I go live in here, I will make them only 15 minutes. So I will put the alarm. When 15 minutes is done, that's it. I will go. That's it. I mean, that's it. I, I, okay, that bingo. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Take care. May the Lord bless you. And I hope to see you soon again. Bye-bye. Christ is Lord. I mean to that.